Uh, we wanted to do an expedition with snow kiting, so we found out that the Vatnajökull glacier was the best way, uh, place to do that. So that's why we uh, went to Iceland. Yeah, we know someone uh, who is a guide here in Iceland who lives in Belgium and there we asked our questions about the Vatnajökull glacier and the possibility to, to cross it and uh, what's, what would be dangerous or not. Uh, so he uh, advised us and also we searched on your uh, safe to travel uh, site information about it. So all the basic equipment that we bring from uh, Belgium was uh, for of course uh, our tents, uh, skis, snowboards, kites, also satellite phone, um, some maps, um, but of course um, some things we uh, do have to buy in, in Iceland. Uh, were our fuel because on the plane uh, we couldn't take the fuel with us uh, so for cooking and of course even we have a satellite, satellite phone, a mobile uh, telephone to reach uh, it was also important uh, for us to have an extra safety and so we rented also in Reykjavik uh, a beacon because we never known if it was necessary or not so our pro pro uh, travel plan um, to, to cross the Vatnajökull was in fact to start at the east side of uh, Iceland, about 20 kilometers uh, from the glacier, uh, to start at the region of Snafjell and there to go up to the, to the glacier. So um, we, went, uh, we were already one week on the glacier and we did uh, approximately about uh, 80 kilometers. So we just had to do still 15 kilometers to our ending point. But there, um, there at, at night uh, the, the problems began because there was a lot of wind and a lot of uh, snow. So uh, the problem was that one, one pole uh, broke and the tent began to collapse and there was many many snow that was coming onto the tent. So both we, we tried um, to hold the tent while sitting uh, at, uh, at the direction of, of the snow. During the day it was a lot of wind, but uh, at uh, the end of the day when we want to, to cook our meal it also starts snowing and uh, since we couldn't build a wall uh, around the tent because the snow was too soft, the, the snow got up the, the tent and uh, crashed the tent uh, in, in, in a few hours. We tried to dig out the tent uh, every 15 minutes, but uh, the time getting in the tent back again, the, the tent was covered with snow again. So we decided to, to reinforce the tent with ourselves and with our backs against the wall and the poles. But but uh, the snow uh, was, was too powerful and uh, we couldn't uh, keep the weight uh, of the snow and, and the wind. So that's the moment when we decided we had to call for help because uh, it wouldn't take hours before the tent uh, was completely, completely uh, blocked with snow. Yeah. When we pushed the beacon uh, we tried to, to get a lot of material that we could reach uh, what was available in the tent, so we took all our clothing, put all our clothing on, uh, put ourselves in our sleeping bags, uh, took, took a, a little bit of food uh, for the night and we tried to stay warm and to stay calm and uh, we made a shift of someone resting and someone uh, keeping awake and to, to support the tent and to see what's happening with the tent and that was our plan during the night. Uh, yeah. The moment we launched the beacon, uh, we were prepared to, to wait, uh, as, uh, even if it's necessary, one day. Uh, we thought that a uh, helicopter or help will arrive uh, in, in the morning when it was clear and the storm was over. But uh, the help came very quickly. My colleague Geert uh, did uh, Greenland and a lot of other countries and I also did uh, Norway as training. Uh, and I, I think we were very good prepared, but uh, Iceland was, uh, was different. Uh, the weather was worse than uh, Norway. You can't uh, really compare uh, Norway with, uh, with Icelandic uh, weather. Um, so the lesson that uh, we have learned, even if you are very, very well uh, prepared, the weather is something that uh, you never can be foreseen and um, of course uh, what's very important is also if you feel that you have to stop it's better to stop 
um, and to get help, then um, then yes, then right. to the, to the, yeah, then to die or yeah. yeah. So uh, my advice, advice is uh, to have a very good uh, equipment, also to be very good uh, prepared to have um, um, satellite phone, different really maps, exact maps, but also uh, to rent uh, an emergency beacon because you never know when you are in uh, problems um, and just yeah, enjoy the trip. But uh, if the weather is bad, consider to call help if necessary. Like we always do, we make a detailed travel plan. Uh, we to coordinate the, the way we are going to do the plan B, uh, person of contact, uh, satellite phone number, uh, as much as uh, possible information for the rescue team. So if it goes wrong, they have all the information to find you very quickly, what material you have and how long you could stay in, in, in a bad uh, situation. So my advice is uh, make a travel plan. It's, it's only a half an hour work and uh, it will help a lot for the rescue services.